Hey guys, it's Bridgette and Desi, and we're here at a local San Diego nursery, Anderson La Casa in North County, San Diego. And I'm gonna be talking to you about how to shop for your garden if you're a brand new gardener, you've never gardened before, what do you get? It's really overwhelming, there's so many different things. And honestly, you can walk out with a pretty expensive cart full of stuff and maybe things that aren't gonna make you successful. So I'm really gonna break down in this video the bare minimum, the things that you need to get your garden started, that you need that are essential. Now I'm also gonna be doing a locals only giveaway, so make sure you watch the whole video and at the end I'm gonna talk about how you can come up to this really cool nursery and get some free seeds. Before I do that, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button so you're notified anytime we put out a video. Okay, so we're here at the nursery and trust me, I still remember what it was like in the beginning times of my gardening journey. You go to a nursery and you're so excited, you want everything, literally, you want all the plants, all the stuff, all the gadgets, all the gizmos, and it's exciting, but you can make a lot of purchases that aren't actually gonna help you in your gardening journey in the beginning, and it can get really expensive. So I wanna walk through the most logical way that you should shop for your garden, where you get exactly what you have to have to start your garden, and some of the thought process on how you wanna pick it out, and how you can be as successful as possible by getting each item that you need so that you can go home and actually start your garden. So when you get to the nursery, you can get a cart or you can get a little hand basket, but we definitely need soil. And likely if you are a new gardener, you need soil too. So let's go check out their soil and I can talk about the differences and what you might wanna purchase for your garden. Okay, so we're at the nursery here and as you can tell, there's a lot of soil options. And it can be very overwhelming if you're a new gardener of which one do you get for your first vegetable garden. Well, I wanna go through them quickly and just kinda of show you. There are things called earthworm casting, there's potting soil, there's garden soil, there's soil building. Oh my God, it goes on and on and on. It's very confusing in the beginning when you're a new gardener. Well, keep in mind that when you're gardening the first season, if you're growing in a pot or a raised bed, or even if you're growing in the ground, but particularly pots and raised beds, you really need to get something that's gonna give you the most bang for your buck and grow the, the plants in a way in which that they have good aeration, good drainage, and it holds a lot of moisture. That's very important in our county because it's very hot, right? So it wouldn't be a good idea to get something like citrus or palm mix. That's not gonna work for vegetables. Or azalea or camellia mix. That's not gonna work either. Soil conditioner, that only works if you're conditioning soil that you already have. Raised bed mix, it's okay, but it's not the best thing that you can have for a pot or a raised bed. It's kinda like, the flour for your cookies. You need all the other good stuff too. So if you're only gonna buy one product, only one type of bag product, I would get the best potting mix that they have on their shelves. So for these guys, this is really good potting mix, 420 potting mix, or the GMB potting mix is really good. Potting mix is good because it has everything you need in it for aeration, drainage, peat moss or coconut core to hold on to moisture, and it likely will have a very small amount of fertilizer, which is important. Now, I know that it's really tempting to try to get something like the raised bed mix, something like this, because you're like, wow, look, I get three cubic foot. I get a really big bale of it for probably less or the same amount as a small potting mix. Again, this is really just filler. And can you grow in it? Yes. Can you grow in it successfully? Mm, the jury's still out on that. So buy the best potting mix that you can. And then if you can afford additives like compost, worm castings, or other things, that's a great additive to make the potting mix even better and to grow happier, healthier plants. Okay, so we're walking to our number two thing that you need to get in the garden. And we're going through all of this really fun stuff. News flash, I know it's hard, but if you're gardening on a budget, you don't need any of this yet. Start with the basics and then build from there. He's a good boy. He's such a good boy. Okay, so number one thing that I talked about is soil. You have to have something to plant your plants in. Soil is the most important. If you've got a limited budget, really make sure you put some money aside for soil. Number two, you need something to plant, right? That's the whole reason we're gardening. So either seeds, which are the most economical, but you gotta learn how to start them. We have tons of videos on how to do that. 
or starts. If you're a new gardener, you're likely going to shop for starts. And so you would come to the start section of your nursery and pick out whatever plants that you want to grow in your garden and remember to make sure that you get what's in season. That's really important. <laughs> So we have a whole video that you got to check out that tells you exactly how to pick out your starts for your garden so that you can get the happiest and healthiest plants. Okay, so when you're shopping for your garden, for those of you who are advanced enough to start your own seeds, which hopefully with my help I can get you there, you want to go to the seed section in your nursery and pick out your seeds that you're going to grow. But keep in mind that you don't want to go too crazy, especially if you're planting on a budget. We actually have a whole video where I explain how to pick out your seeds when you're a new gardener, so make sure you check that out. We'll put a link in the description of this video so that you can watch that and make sure that you don't go too crazy. I know it's really easy to do that. And also, we're gonna be giving away some seed packs to locals only. So this is only if you're in San Diego County and you can swing by Anderson LaCosta's nursery to pick up the seeds because you gotta come here to actually get them. And then you can take time and walk around this gorgeous nursery and check out why we love this spot. So to win your fall seeds from Anderson LaCosta, make sure you subscribe to the channel, comment on this video, and make sure that you're subscribed to our newsletter because that's how we announce the one lucky winner that we pick out so you can come by and get your seeds for this fall's planting season. So I picked out these varieties because they're some of my favorites. La Sonato Kale, you're gonna plant it now for cool season. Bib Butternut, Bib Butternut. <laughs> Bib, uh, buttercrunch bib lettuce, also cool season. Are you sensing a theme here? These are all things that you plant right now. Paris Island lettuce, an amazing romaine lettuce. Colibri spinach, a really great spinach for Southern California. And Danvers carrots. These seeds are gonna go to Mariah, the owner. <laughs> She's got Desi. So come on up and pick them up. She'll make sure that they get to you, but make sure you comment on this video, subscribe to our channel, and subscribe to the newsletter because that's how you know you're gonna be the one lucky winner. Now lastly, there's one more thing that you need if you're starting your garden. We talked about soil, we talked about starts and seeds. Now you have to be able to feed your plants. So let's go check out their fertilizers. Hey guys, it's not raining or no one's peeing outside. It's actually a fountain, I promise. <laughs> But we are here in the little fertilizer house that's at Anderson LaCosta's nursery, looking at their fertilizers and talking about what fertilizer you need to choose for your garden if you're gardening first time and on a budget. So I included fertilizer in this video because it's so important that you feed your plants. And oftentimes when you're a new gardener and you're buying bagged garden soil or potting mix, there's a little bit of food, but not a lot to grow big, robust, beautiful plants. So you come into the fertilizer section and you get totally overwhelmed and you see things like worm castings and um, just and, and citrus and avocado food and palm food and it's really overwhelming. What are you gonna use for your vegetable garden? Well, the most important thing is to get something that has very even numbers. And what do I mean by that? I mean the numbers on the front, which is the nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. You really want these numbers to be pretty close within one, pretty close within each other, meaning you don't really want something that's like a 20 one, zero. That's because you want even amounts of nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus when you're first starting your garden. So if you've watched some of our other videos and you're a total nerd like my videographer Jeff, he's gonna tell you that in general, the second number needs to be about double the first number. Now that gets really confusing and this video is for new beginning gardeners. Again, what I like to tell people is look for even numbers, meaning that it can be 555, 666, 222, or 463. Nice low number, so under eight and across the board relatively even with each other is going to give you a good mix. The other thing you could do is just read the package because this like tomato, vegetable, and herb fertilizer has been formulated specifically for tomato, vegetable, herb. A little pro tip I can give you too is if you have fertilizer on hand, like let's say you've got some leftover citrus and fruit tree fertilizer you can absolutely use this in the vegetable garden. That is A-OK. -okay. It's just formulated more for fruit trees. But if you turn it around and you look on the back and you read the in instructions, a lot of times you'll find that it's very similar instructions to your tomato, vegetable, and herb. What it is is it's got nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus, which is gonna help the plant grow. And so if it's 
if it is a nice even number and nothing too crazy high that would burn your plants, you can use it in your vegetable garden and it's gonna help your plants grow bigger, healthier, and happier. Now, what you wouldn't wanna reuse that could be potentially damaging to your garden is anything that is for high acidity plants. So azalea, camellia, rhododendron, blueberry mix, a lot of those are meant for making the soil more acidic. Things for like hydrangeas, those are going to actually change the chemistry of the soil specifically for them and it's not for vegetables but again citrus and fruit is fine vegetable and herb all purpose is fine use what you can afford that first season and keep in mind that you have to continue to stock the pantry as I like to call it of the soil in your garden each year so you're not going to fertilize just once you're going to fertilize every season we've got tons of videos and information on that but it is an essential part of your first shopping trip to the nursery. You wanna make sure you get soil, your, your seeds or your starts, and then you wanna make sure you get something to feed those babies so that they can grow big and happy. Okay, so let's say you've gone and you've bought all those things and you still have money left in your budget to shop for your first garden. There are a couple other things that are really helpful. So a really good watering can is essential or any type of watering uh, equipment that you might need that might be adapters or a really good hose. Water is essential for your garden. So anything you can do to make sure you get water efficiently and easily from the hose into the garden is really important. So that might be irrigation things. But trust me, the first time I started a garden, I was in a tiny little apartment and I had one little crappy watering can and my watering hose bib was way on the other side of the house, but I made it work. That is okay. As you go through your gardening journey, you'll find out things that make your garden more efficient and more pleasurable and make your plants grow healthier and happier. And irrigation is a really important part of that. Again, as always, we have tons of videos on irrigation, how to set it up, what type of irrigation to get. Make sure you check out our channel and subscribe to our channel so that we can help you be the best gardener yet.